Welcome to Data Manipulation in Python's most tedious lecture, setting up your development environment so that you can do the rest of this course without any issues whatsoever. I will endeavor to run through this section as quickly as possible. I've broken it down into three sections like normal, installing Python, coding editors, and then how to manage your files so that you don't lose any of the work that you've put in whilst doing this course, or future courses, or future projects. I should point out right now that it is time to be brave. This is actually the hardest and most challenging part of the course, simply because everyone doing this course is doing it with a slightly different configuration, different versions of different operating systems, using different packages at different points in time. So when things go wrong, it's much harder to diagnose. Once everything's installed and set up, everything should run smooth. So please don't get disheartened if something goes wrong here. Send me a message. This happens all the time. People <laughs> change things and break things all the time. We'll get you sorted out. Section one, installing Python. So there's a few ways we can do this. We can go through Python's actual website. Uh, I would say don't do that. We can do something better, which is install a scientific distribution of Python. We have two options here, Anaconda or Miniconda. Anaconda comes with everything. It comes with a whole bunch of libraries already installed. It comes with editors. It comes with everything that you need. You can also use Miniconda, which is Anaconda, but small. So it doesn't come with those packages, though you can install them. It doesn't come with the editors by default, though you can install them. It's good for, uh, let's say, putting uh, Python on something like a high performance computer, a supercomputer, or a cluster computer, because often they don't want you installing too much stuff on there. I'm going to recommend we go with Python, but I'll run you through how you can do it in any other way, just in case you want to. So if for some reason you wanted to go through Python's website, you can go to that link there. Uh, the link works right now, but maybe they move something in the future and they relocate it. If they do, let me know. Uh, this is fine to do. Uh, however, you will just get a base version of Python. You won't get all the good extras that you'd get from Anaconda. So I wouldn't really recommend doing it this way. So the much better option is here, Anaconda. You can go to that link and download it. Make sure you select the uh, right operating system and also the Python 3 version, not the Python 2. So generally Python 3, 64-bit, that's what you want. Anaconda comes with libraries, uh, Conda, and virtual environments. Virtual environments are absolutely huge. Let's say you're doing deep learning and one of your projects requires TensorFlow to be a very specific version and you have a different project on a different version. Absolutely no worries with virtual environments. You install them both in separate environments and you swap between them as you will. Absolutely no issues there. The only potential downside you could say of Anaconda is it is a large download, 600 megs or so. For those of you with a good internet connection, you're probably laughing, 600 megs, that isn't much. I'm sitting here in Australia and that takes me about half an hour to download. So it's almost a concern, but I would just say go with Anaconda. And here's the link for Miniconda if you want it. Here's the link as as it works right now. It's smaller and faster. You can download this simply as a bash script, like a very large bash script. Put that onto a supercomputer and just run and it'll install locally. Uh, it's useful if you're on a supercomputer. You, If you've used one before, you probably know that they have a selection of modules that are pre-installed and you can't go in and change those. If you want certain packages, you have to install them into your local user folder. If you want to do other things and compiling code, pain in the ass. Uh, Miniconda solves a lot of those potential issues. It doesn't come with any of the bells and whistles, but if you don't need them, why not? All right, so at the end of this lecture, I'm going to run through a live install of Anaconda and using the editor that we'll pick, which is Jupyter Notebook, spoiler alert. Uh, if you decide to just go ahead and do it yourself anyway and you install it, you can verify it that it's installed correctly a few ways on Windows. Open command prompt on Mac or Linux, you open terminal, and you run Python dash capital V. The capital V says, give me the version of Python, don't actually launch Python, and it'll tell you uh, where it's installed, what version it is, and it should say, like an Anaconda install. If you're on Windows, you can sometimes have issues if Anaconda isn't added to your path, in which case Anaconda will have installed Anaconda prompt. Just open that, python-v, and it should still be working. So use either one, whichever one works for you. All right, let's change track just for a little while and talk about the different editors you can use to code in. I've put four relatively popular options here. There are obviously an absolute ton. If you already use one and you're comfortable with it, don't feel the need to change to what I'm using for this course. Uh, just do what you're comfortable with. The four options I've got here are Idle, Spider, Jupyter Notebooks, and PyCharm. Let's get into the details right now. 
So the first option we have is Idle. It's the editor that comes bundled with Python, and I despise absolutely everything about it. It's not interactive, it doesn't really have completion, uh, it opens files in separate windows, you can see what it looks like on the right there, it's... Uh, it's incredibly painful to use. So let's just move on. Now for a real option, Spider. Spider comes bundled with Anaconda. I don't know if it will continue to come bundled. Uh, Anaconda and Spider used to be partnered. That's now no longer the case, but it's still there. Uh, it is an interactive environment. That means it's an IPython environment. So you can see on the right, you can embed plots, not just text output. Uh, it's good for a small number of files. You can have multiple files open. You can press F5 and run them or just type code into the right hand panel. It's super useful. It has IPython. Well, give it a shot if you want. Another great option for IPython and interactive coding is Jupyter Notebooks. This also comes bundled with Anaconda, which is why I'm recommending it. I will note that as of the time of uh, recording this, there is Jupyter Labs as well, which is essentially an improvement upon notebooks, a better way of structuring and running them. You can give that a look if you want. It, it doesn't at the moment come bundled with, but they have essentially the same functionality once you're inside and coding. It's the file management stuff that's a little bit different. You can see on the right that it's interactive just like Spider, but it is cell based. So Spider is file based. You have a file and you run the file. Here in Jupyter you have cells and you can execute each cell independently. So that's really handy uh, if you're just uh, essentially mucking around with code and doing something sequentially, just for example doing data analysis, which is what we're going to be doing and which is why we're going to be using Jupyter Notebooks in this course. Or at least I am. You can do what you want. And one more option for everyone to consider is PyCharm. This is what I use for my actual projects in research, simply because PyCharm is a full-fledged IDE, an integrated development environment, so it has a ton of features that things like Spider won't. If I'm doing a data exploration or preliminary analysis, I'll still use notebooks, that's fine. Uh, however, once I have a whole bunch of files and they're all talking to each other and I have these huge code bases and I want things like Git integration to just work smoothly, uh, I will use PyCharm. It has all of that stuff built in, so I highly recommend it if you have a large project. If you're just doing exploratory work, I would say probably overkill. Another note about PyCharm is that it has both a free and a paid version. The free version, the community version, is all you'll actually need. Uh, the paid version comes with extra goodies, but it's more focused towards, let's say, web server development and fun things like that. If you do have an educational uh, email address, a .edu email, you can get the professional version for free. That's what I currently do. Saves me a fair bit of money, uh, but the community edition is what I used to use for several years. One final thing before we jump into the live install is file management. This is actually surprisingly important because the number of people that lose work because they haven't managed their files properly and done backups or put it out online is quite large and no one wants to be that person that has to go talk to their supervisor or their colleagues and say, hey, that work that I promised you had a hard drive failure and now it's all gone, so sorry about that. So we have a few ways of mitigating potential disasters. One of them that I see some people use is just manual backups. You have an external hard drive and every now and then you just copy and paste your work folder over. Please don't do that. If you want to back your things up, I recommend using something like Git, a version control system that's used everywhere in the industry. It's free. Uh, get a GitHub account, put all your code on GitHub, make it open source. Great for your resume. Any recruiter is going to be looking at your GitHub. If for some reason you don't want to do that, and please, 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 please just do that. If you use something like PyCharm, it does also keep track of your local file history so that even if you screw around with the file, you can right click and say show local history and it'll show every edit you've done over the past month or so. But I would say please, the moral here is just learn Git before starting any sort of project that you care about. Alright, so let's now jump into the live Anaconda install. You can follow along on the video. If uh, it moves too fast or you get tired of pausing or waiting, I also wrote up an online guide that you can see on that link. It's on my personal website. I wrote that uh, actually a little while ago, but everything should still uh, be current and up to date. If you have any issues with this step, like I said, please just let me know and we'll debug it together.